Hey everyone, it's Foyzer Dave here, and welcome to an OBS streaming tutorial. Now, I know a load of you guys are stuck at home at the moment due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And whilst that sucks for a lot of us, it also means that a lot of us can get into streaming. And I know that a lot of you guys might be looking to get into streaming. I know that I've been doing a lot more streaming in lockdown and uh, it's given me a good opportunity to try and grow it as much as possible. So I wanted to share a video with you guys updating what I currently believe are the best settings for streaming to Twitch through OBS. Now these settings will also be decent for YouTube and Mixer and other websites like that. So I'll cover a bit of them as well, but this video will be mainly focused on streaming to Twitch. So let's get started. Make sure we've got OBS open. Now I've currently got the 32 bit version of OBS open here, and that is because I'm currently recording with the 64 bit version. So you guys want to make sure you've got the 64 bit version open. You can do that. If you just open up uh, your start menu and type in OBS, you'll see that you've got OBS Studio 64 bit and OBS Studio 32 bit. Make sure you're going for this one because that's going to enable you to use more resources. No one wants to be running the 32 bit version anymore. So make sure that's open and you'll be presented with a screen somewhat similar to this. Uh, you won't have a lot of this thing, stuff like chat, Twitch activity, basically all the Twitch stats, you won't have any of that, uh, unfortunately, but you can add that very soon following this tutorial. So first thing we want to do is jump into the settings in the controls area. Got a bunch of tabs down the side here and we're going to go through each of them one by one. So let's start on general. Most things here you can just leave unticked. The only things I would recommend ticking if it suits you is stuff like automatically record when streaming. I recommend that people, you know, edit their VODs, upload them to YouTube. It's a really good way of getting Twitch growth. For me personally, I do YouTube and Twitch quite evenly. So I need to record as I'm streaming and having this ticked means it will automatically do that, which is nice once you've set up the settings and the, the quality settings for the recording and streaming. Uh, nothing else in here I think is that important. Uh, I'd say have a look through these, see if anything makes sense to you. You never know, you might find something in here which is really useful to you. Uh, I like changing my theme to Twitchy because I think it looks nice. Next is the stream tab. Uh, this is a very interesting tab. This allows you to choose which service you're going to stream to. So for me, I'm using Twitch. We've got a load of different options here. YouTube, Mixer, even Restream if you want to stream to multiple places. That could be quite interesting. Next, we've got the server. Now, typically, you want to put this to uh, whichever server is closest to you, which for me would be Europe, UK, London. For some reason, there's two of them. Not sure why. However, I've consistently got better performance from Netherlands. And if you go to this website, rich.net, you'll be led to an application called Twitch Test. Now, Twitch Test is a bandwidth testing tool that will basically tell you what the best server is for you. And it might not necessarily be the one that's nearest to you. So for me, uh, Amsterdam in the Netherlands was the best one for me, having run that tool. So go download that, give it a quick run and see what comes out as best for you. You just get these little metrics some in terms of quality and it tells you literally which one to use. Amsterdam, Netherlands works best for me. We can then connect our account, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, whatever, and it allows you to control a bunch of different things from OBS. So for Twitch, it allows me to change my stream information, look at my chat, look at my activity feed and see like metrics down here and stuff. So that's really cool. that You can do this all from OBS rather than having loads of internet tabs open. Next, we're going to look in the output tab. This is where we start dialing in a lot of the actual key settings. I don't want to ramble too much here, so I'm going to fly through this. Make sure you stay focused. So we're on the streaming tab in the advanced output mode. We do not want to be on simple. Simple is bad. It doesn't give us any control. So turn it to advanced. Go to the streaming tab. Audio track. You can only select one here. So leave it to one and we can set up audio track one as our streaming track. Next, we have our encoder. Do not use quick sync, even if you have it as an option, it's terrible. If you have an, a, oh, sorry, an AMD graphics card, you're gonna have an option here to use the AMD graphics cards encoder. It's not very good at the moment. Hopefully in the future it gets better, but do not use it. You then have to choose between NVENC if you've got a NVIDIA card or X264. X264 is very, very taxing on your CPU. So you need a very strong CPU to run this. And in general, if you have a single single PC streaming setup, so you don't have a second streaming PC, then you almost certainly want to run NVENC. If you're on a newer 
NVIDIA card, i.e. an RTX card, so a 2060 or 2070, a whole, any of the 20 series, or if you're on a 1600 series card, like a 1660, you will have the NVENC new. Otherwise, you're going to have the old NVENC. They're both decent, but the new one definitely has better quality. They both have similar settings, so I'm going to run through them. If there's any difference in settings, things missing, things added, leave a comment below and I'll tell you what you should set it to. Rescale output and enforce streaming service encoder settings. Leave both of these unticked. Uh, rescale output's good if you want to stream and record at different resolutions, which I did for a bit, but I'm not doing any more, so I leave it unticked. Uh, enforce streamer service encoder settings. We do not want this ticked, um, and I'll explain why in a second. Rate control, we're going to set this to CBR, which means a constant bit rate. A constant bit rate means that you're not going to have your bit rate jumping around on stream. Twitch and other websites do not like a variable bit rate, so set it to CBR. Bit rate. So first thing with bit rate, and if you guys don't understand what it really means, it's just the quality. It's how many bits we're putting into the video per second. So ideally, higher is better, but we've got a couple of limiting factors. Number one is going to be your upload speed. So we want to run a speed test. So go to speedtest.net, run a speed test and see what your upload speed is. Ideally, you want a decent upload speed, which can support both your, one second, can support both your bitrate here as well as the bitrate in the video, uh, with the audio, sorry. So video bitrate, audio bitrate, as well as some overhead for general gaming, because gaming uses a little bit of upload bandwidth as well. Uh, I've got 20 megabits per second or 20,000 kilobits per second. So I've got plenty of headroom to run this at 8,000 and not struggle at all in terms of any, any dropped frames. So all good. Uh, if you're not hitting that amount of kilobits per second, then you're just going to have to drop it down until it becomes stable. So it's below your upload speed. Next is basically understanding what we should actually set this to because different websites have different hard caps in terms of how high you can set this. For Twitch, apparently it's 6,000, but I've managed to run this at 8,000 and many others have ran it at like 7,000 or even higher and they haven't had any issues. So I would say set this to 7,000 or like 8,000 see if it works. If it does, then you're golden. Some people it might not work for, so just keep an eye on your stream. But this is just going to jack your quality up really, really well for basically free. It's, it's amazing. Next is keyframe interval. Just set this to two. That's the best thing for basically all streaming services. That's what they say on their website. They don't want anything else. Set this to two, leave it there. Preset, ideally you want to put this to whatever the quality setting is. There's a quality setting and a max quality. Uh, max quality is a little bit more taxing on the system, but gives better results. So if you have this as an option and you can run it without having any issues, then do. If not, put it to quality. I'm going to keep it at max quality because my system's good enough to just have it there and have no issues. Next is profile. Uh, so this is going to be affecting the overall look of your video, affecting the colors, affecting some of the compression. In general, high is going to be your best option here. Look ahead, just keep this off. This will dynamically adjust your max B frames if you have it on, and we do not want that for when we're streaming, so leave it off. Psycho visual tuning is literally a free boost in quality, honestly. It says that it increases uh, GPU utilization, but I've seen no issues running this. So just turn this on, get better quality. GPU, just keep this at zero unless you're running multiple GPUs, in which case, that's a whole nother ballpark, which I'm not going to go into. So just leave that at zero. And then max B frames for most people who are streaming, you want to put this at two. But for those of you who are streaming kind of low, uh, low movement games, maybe like strategy games that are slower uh, in terms of what's happening on screen, putting this up to four may yield you better results in terms of quality. So try out two, try out four, see what works for you. Okay, next we're going into the recording tab uh, and we're going to quickly skip past it because we don't want to look at this too much because that's for the recording video. So we're going into the audio tab now. The audio tab is going to allow us to set our audio bit rates for all our tracks. Now when I'm streaming, I actually only use two of these. I use uh, the first track and the third track. What's a bit annoying is that these are called tracks, but then as we said here, we selected which audio track. Uh, audio track one for me contains my stream down mix and my mic. So track one contains track one and track three. It's a bit confusing. These should be named different things, honestly. But we want to make sure that our main audio going out to Twitch is at 160 kilobits per second. That is 
what Twitch accepts as their highest. So set it there. It will give you good audio for a stream and you're fine. You can also then name it. You could just name it stream audio or whatever. Uh, I have my mic set to 320 and um, I'm having no issue streaming with it. Uh, the reason I have that set to 320 is because I also record using the same mic input. So I want to have um, that at the max. So 160 for your main audio. Maybe jack up your mic a little bit because it's probably the most important audio on your stream. Replay buffer, not something we're going to look at. Audio. Now, sample rate. Neither of these is going to give you better quality. Okay? All you need to make sure is that all of your devices are using the same frequency. So I have my mic, I've got all my audio going through my Go XLR, and my basically my, my amp and everything like that. Everything is at 48 kilohertz. You can check this by going into, if I go open up sound, um, sorry, sound, where is it? Sound on Windows. And you can see all your devices. So for example, here, my chat um, input, which is from my Go XLR, if I go properties and go, uh, advanced, you can see it's 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz. All of these should be the same, otherwise you're going to get syncing issues. So make sure that that's just set to whatever the rest of them are. If they're all 44.1, go with 44.1. That's fine. It's not an issue. Next, channels. Leave this at stereo. You don't want to try anything else here. Stereo audio is standard for streaming. And now we have our devices. So this is basically, we went to output. So the, we had all these different names for our different tracks. Now we've got exactly what each of these tracks uh, actually is coming from. So I've got things like system, chat, voice meter output, broadcast stream mix, all this kind of stuff. In general, you only need two inputs if you're starting off, and that's gonna be your computer audio as a desktop audio. So just find whatever your default audio device is and put that in this top desktop audio one. And then for mic slash auxiliary audio, you need to put your mic. That's all you need. Um, I can go into more of this stuff later on if you want me to. Leave a comment below. Uh, but for now, put your computer audio here. Put your mic audio here. Done. Okay. Uh, all the rest of the stuff here isn't super important, so I'm not going to go into it. Next is video. We're coming towards the end here. So video. We've got a base uh, canvas resolution and the output scaled resolution. This is another point of debate, and you can you can debate this yourself and see what you think. But uh, a lot of people say put your base slash canvas resolution to whatever your uh, your desktop native re resolution is, which for me is my uh, is twenty it's fourteen forty p because I'm a t I've got a two K monitor, and then they say put your output scaled resolution to whatever you want to stream at. So for me, it's ten eighty p. I've actually had better results by setting these two exactly the same. So what this means is it's just choosing where the scaling is happening. Um, I would honestly recommend for most newer users, um, you're going to have an easier time setting your base canvas resolution to your native resolution rather than trying to downscale it. There's a lot of topics you can look on this. EpostVox has a video on this if you want to look at it. Try it out, but make sure the main thing is that your output scaled resolution is set to what you want to stream to. So 1080p or 864p or 720p, whatever. And then try different base canvas resolutions. Um, either just set it equal or set it to your native resolution. Downscale filter. I choose Lanxos here. For some people, they might think that this is actually too sharp, in which case try by cubic. Try both these out. Uh, different people have different results for different games. I find that Langzos works the best for me in most games. And then for FPS, make sure this is set to common FPS values. And in general, you want to stream at 60 FPS. If you can't support 60, maybe try 50. If you can't support 50, you're going to have to do 30. But most people aren't going to want to watch 30 FPS streams. Unless, of course, the game you're playing is at 30 FPS, in which case don't run at 60 FPS because you're just wasting bitrate. Just drop this to 30 and you'll get much better quality. But in general, leave it at 60. Hotkeys, you can set up loads of different hotkeys here. I've got certain things like enabling and disabling my previews and muting and unmuting bits, which are quite useful. And in advanced, a couple of things I like to change here. Process priority. I actually put this to above normal. I would happily take a little bit of an FPS hit in my games uh, to make sure that my stream isn't dropping out for any reason. Uh, so most of my games run at a normal priority and I make sure OBS is running at above normal. I think it's a nice little tip um, 
because otherwise you, your game might be running perfectly, but your stream might just suffer horribly. And honestly, that's going to be worse in the long run. So set this to above normal for most people, I think. Renderer, I've only got one option here, which is Direct 3D 11. There's no option for Direct 3D 12 or OpenGL or anything at the moment. So if you've got other options, I wouldn't even bother. Just set it to Direct 3D 11. Color format, NV12 is what you should be going with here for all of our kind of streaming. Nothing like this. Don't even bother trying. Color space and color range, a bit of trial and error here. I get the best colors uh, from setting this to 709 and this to partial. But other people like putting this on full. Some people like dropping this to 601. It might depend on the game. It might depend on your eyes. Just try them out and see what works for you. And then down here, there's nothing else, I don't think. So that is all the settings. Uh, and setting those settings up and then pulling in some, some sources, getting in your, all your different uh, your, your tags and stuff and getting everything set up, you're going to have a decent first stream. So do a couple of test streams, try it out, see how you end up. And... Uh, Hopefully this has been a useful video for you guys. Uh, I like going in depth into my settings so that you guys get the best knowledge from it. I don't just want to tell you, put these settings on and it will work because that doesn't help you guys. So thank you very much for watching. I will catch you guys in my next video and hopefully I'll see you guys streaming. Bye-bye.